Hello everybody, it's me, Julian. And today I would like to introduce you to what is arguably Hegel's most difficult idea, which is saying a lot considering that Hegel is already a pretty difficult thinker in general. And this concept is the cunning of reason, or die List der Vernunft, which is part of Hegel's theory of history and the dialectic. In fact, one of the things that makes this a difficult concept is that if you look it up online, at least in the English-speaking world, the definition that you'll find isn't actually a good description of what Hegel means. The commonly used definition that you'll find like in the encyclopedia online is that the cunning of reason is the process by which spirit uses or employs human passions against themselves. Essentially that humans, that, that spirit is like a puppet master uh, predeterministically guiding the world according to a plan and he uses human passion so that human beings think they're acting of their own volition when it is in fact the secret master plan of some absolute spirit. Of course, a wonderfully poetic description, but not really accurate. Um, in fact, this is one of the ironies of studying Hegel, that often the way in which Hegel is taught doesn't really reflect what Hegel meant. Like many students, at least in the English speaking world, will start with thesis antithesis synthesis, and while it's a useful shorthand of sorts, it nevertheless has nothing to do with Hegel's dialectic. In fact, Hegel's dialectical argument arguably is precisely against this form of Fichtean formalism. This means that before one even begins studying Hegel, one is already stuck in the woods in these battles or debates on who or what Hegel actually is and what he's arguing. And so my goal here is to try to um, introduce you on a very basic and accessible level to one of Hegel's most controversial ideas, namely the cunning of reason. And in order to understand the cunning of reason, it helps to know two things. One, what cunning is for Hegel, list. Um, and secondly, what Hegel means by reason. In fact, let's begin with Hegel's definition of reason because that can be confusing. So when Hegel writes the cunning of reason or in German, die List der Vernunft, he's using the word Vernunft to designate reason. And Hegel likes to distinguish between two types of reason, between Verstand and Vernunft. Verstand is a lower form of knowledge, by which he means it is the knowledge of things in the world, empirical knowledge, as it were, scientific knowledge. So Verstand is reason with a small r, if you will. And then we have what Hegel calls Vernunft, or a higher form of reason, reason with a capital R. And often when it's taught in, uh, uh, at university, or perhaps even online, you'll see that the difference between Verstand and Vernunft is taught as knowing versus understanding. Verstand is when you know things in the world, and reason, or Vernunft, is when you understand how those things in the world emerge or are seen in the first place. Essentially, it's an ontological division, which is to say it's an inquiry into the nature of being and how things appear to us. Therefore, Verstand, the lower form of reason, is how we know things as they appear to us. Whereas Vernunft, the higher form of reasoning, is understanding the horizon against which things can appear to us in the first place. This makes it, in a sense, a Kantian category. The Kantian inquiry, the so-called critique of pure reason, made a massive leap in metaphysics away from the investigation into the content of the ideal towards the question, what pre-circumstances have to occur so that the concept or the idea of the ideal can emerge subjectively in the first place? But that's for another video. Hegel, therefore, when he talks about Vernunft, namely List der Vernunft, the cunning of reason, is talking about this higher reason, this understanding, which, to put it in formulaic terms, essentially is the knowledge as to the form uh, by which the ideal content makes itself known. That's the most technical version of it. So now we've defined what Hegel means by reason i.e. Vernunft, higher reason or understanding. So what is the cunning of said reason? 
I should also very briefly say that perhaps for the sake of this video, instead of reason, we could also say spirit, the cunning of spirit. That might help to make it understandable as well. So what is this cunning? Well, arguably, the Hegelian cunning or list functions in a similar way to what you might call the Socratic cunning. In the Socratic dialogue, Socrates is always speaking with an interlocutor. Sometimes it's a somewhat dumb student or acolyte who simply affirms, or it's an antagonist, like a sophist. And what Socrates does is that he tries to establish seemingly simple common sense things, like what is a friend? And by means of drawing the opponent into an exchange of ideas or positions, he complicates the original proposition more and more, therefore leading the opponent into contradictions, into logical impasses that can't be resolved. This means that, in a sense, Socrates requires the interlocutor. He needs the other person to facilitate his argumentation. He needs to go the wrong way so as to go the right way, as it were. This means that Socrates, strictly speaking, employs what you might call a cunning, the cunning of reason, which is to say he can't simply make a proposition. Instead, he's interested in drawing the opponent, the interlocutor, into a kind of complicated dance in which they go back and forth, making propositions that become increasing more complicated so as to reach a higher synthesis or idea. Here we have the basic difference between what you might call the Socratic Platonic dialectic and the Hegelian one. The Socratic dialectic is essentially rhetorical in form. It's the idea that every idea bounces back and forth until it reaches a higher form of knowing or understanding. Hegel essentially takes the structure of the Socratic dialogue and applies it to the metaphysical binary of substance and subject itself. It's not that ideas are going back and forth between the thinking and positing subjects, it's that substance itself posits itself through subjectivity, therefore going back and forth, the Hegelian dialectic, or the positing of the presuppositions, to throw in some more jargon here. And so we've defined the cunning of reason. The cunning, on the one hand, is the process by which something has to go back and forth as if it were being tricked so as to achieve its original goal. And reason is the higher form of reason or understanding, which here I'm going to use as spirit. So let's conclude. What exactly is the cunning of reason or the cunning of spirit and why does it matter for Hegel? Well, first of all, thank you for listening for such a long time. This is a long way of getting there, but it is part of Hegel's theory of history. Hegel essentially made an argument that's a kind of Marxism avant la lettre. It's a foreshadowing of what Marx would do, hence why Marx is influenced by Hegel, which is that everything in the world functions according to a kind of structural pattern, uh, which is to say it's not predetermined, but it functions according to the unity of opposites. Hegel essentially believed that you could come up with a theory of history that was dialectical, a theory of history in which reason or the higher idea of the unfolding of spirit across time wasn't simply linear, it was something that had to constantly go back and forth. It's a beautiful image in one of Günther Grass's, the German novelist's books called Im Krebsgang, like a crab walk. And Hegel almost conceived of spirit or history as a crab that walked sideways so as to walk forward. In fact, one of Hegel's examples in his philosophy of history is the assassination of Caesar. The senators believed that Caesar was the sole obstruction to the Republic. And so if they eliminated him, they would save the Republic. But the exact opposite happened. As soon as they got rid of Caesar, they essentially immortalized Caesar, therefore creating the Augustinian and Caesarian reign. And this meant that the very act which was meant to preserve the Republic was that which put the final nail in its coffin. Here we have the cunning of reason or the cunning of spirit for Hegel as a theory of history. An act which was supposed to save the Roman Republic achieved the exact opposite. This is the cunning of reason by which reason's progress emerged precisely through the act which appeared antithetical to its progression. And Hegel therefore believed that if you understood this process of the dialectic, of the dialectical unfolding of history as spirit, you could start understanding world forces and world events. 
And Marx, in a sense, was the first to really take this quite literally and to adopt, uh, adapt the Hegelian philosophy of history and his dialectic into a form of political economy and a study of the emerging contradictions within capitalism. That is Hegel's cunning of reason, arguably one of his most difficult Download ideas. Download the Google Home app on a phone uh, or tablet. Apologies for the Google Home Assistant who really wanted to be part of this class. I hope that helps. And if you'd like to download my lectures and my recurring ebook subscription, including my guide to Hegel, which is now available, please go to my Patreon. I'll see you tomorrow.